Hello, and welcome to this little mini tutorial on how to build this animation sort of thing. Basically, this is how it works. I built this one just before, just to give an example of what I'm going to be building. So, yeah, basically, it travels from one point to another, and then to like a second and third and fourth point. And you can you can sort of expand it quite easily just by adding an extra point and then linking it up to the object pointers. Alright, okay, so I'm just gonna steal this because I'm gonna want it again. Okay, let's get started. First of all, you will of course need to lay out your path. For that, I use dummy objects, but I mean, you can use anything really. But dummy objects, whoa, come back. Dummy objects are the best, in my opinion. Alright, so just you can put them anywhere. It doesn't matter about the orientation because we're not going to be using global rotation in this video. I'm just going to put four down, just nice and short. Actually, let's spread them out a bit just so I can show something later on. Alright, so you're going to want to grab two object pointers. You're going to want to select them both, disable that, and then select your points in order, in the order that you want the actual object to travel through, obviously. So it'll go from zero to whatever number. And you then need two variable data sources. These are going to be the index numbers of your object pointers. So these are basically going to select the numbers, select the object that's being sort of highlighted. Make sure the second one is default one. That way you've got two selected. You've got the first one and the second one. And then you want an object information vector. Make sure it's a vector. You want the first one going to the first object pointer and the second one going to the second object pointer. And then you want a curved vector data source. Not a normal one, it's got to be a vector. First vector is that one, second vector is that one. Make sure you disable it and to check the reset on disable. Alright, it's all easy enough so far. Next thing you want is an interval trigger. You want that set to one tick intervals, just like a constant sort of, you know, trigger. Then you want an object position event. That's going to be local unticked. Position X to the linear, position Y, and position Z. You can disable modify rotation and you want the target to be whatever object you want to be moving along the path okay and then you can link the interval trigger to the OPE alright All right, next you want another trigger this time do not sort of change the interval we're going to do that later on you want two state events. The first one is going to be on, the second one is going to be off. And in between those you want a impulse delay. Alright, and now just at the end of those you also want a state value, a set value, sorry, which is going to be set to increase by one. Okay. The target of that is going to be these two boxes here. The target of these two state events. Did I select that there? Nope. Okay. The target of these two state events is going to be this curve data source, this OPE, and this trigger. Okay. Nice and easy. Then you can go ahead and link all of those together to create a chain. pretty easy. Just make sure you select the event filter. All 
Right, so now the only thing left to do is to choose the time between each sort of movement, or for each movement, I should say, the time for each movement. So to do that, you want a variable data source. Remember that this variable data source is actually in ticks, not seconds, so one second would be 60 ticks. We'll just use that for now. If I can get it on, okay. And now, what you want to link to this, you want the interval or the duration of the curved data source and the interval on this interval trigger. Not the top one, just this one. Then you also want a two input operator. You want to remove one tick from that. So you want one in operand two. Operand one is linked to this and it's subtract and this one is going to be linked to the delay ticks on this and that should move the box through like that okay now this is all this is pretty this is fine I mean you can use this but the problem with it is that it's not a constant rate it's like a constant speed so it's gonna go fast and then it's gonna slow and then slower again it's basically the speed because the time's constant the distance changes therefore the speeds gonna change so if you've got a longer distance it's gonna go a lot faster than if you've got a shorter distance so if I put these two together it's gonna go a lot slower between those two points so basically to fix this what you want is you want a distance operator I mean you don't have to fix this if you don't want it depends on sort of what you plan on using it for keep it on world, select source 1, you want the object pointer, source 2, you want the other object pointer, it doesn't really matter which order you put them in, but, you know, it is. and then you're going to want a data source, variable data source, this is going to be your speed input, which you can set yourself, it doesn't matter, so let's just say, it's like, I don't know, 2, and then you want two input operator you want to divide the distance by the speed and that will give you the time so I mean you can get rid of this well, actually no wait so we're not finished yet you want another two input operator because that's in, se that's in meters per second oh, that's, that's in seconds there and you want it in ticks so in order to convert it from seconds to ticks you need to multiply by 60 alright so that that is your actual time that you want for the speed of 2 so to do this you can either you can link that to that if you want or you can delete that and link these directly to that which is what I'm going to do because it removes one of the the tiles okay so that's easy enough and that will mean that the speed will always be constant because you've set the speed there we go nice and constant Alright, so that that's it basically for, for movement. Now I'm actually probably gonna end it there and do a second video for rotation. Okay, hopefully that has helped a few people. And